Hi guys! In today's video I will be reviewing the Comet CHA250B vertical multiband antenna. There's mixed results on the internet about this antenna. You either like it or love it. Well stick around and I'll give you my two cents. This is KI4 ARC Red Crossover. KI4 ARC K4 NRG, go ahead. wanted to give you a heads up. Um, we talked to the Aries EC and he is disp disp I have limited space in my backyard to erect a dipole, a regular dipole antenna. I just don't have the room. And I also live in a homeowner's association which puts restrictions on antennas. So for me to go ahead and try to reach out on HF, I have chosen the Comet CHA250B vertical multiband antenna. The Comet CHA250B vertical has given me an option that I can explore as far as trying to reach out to a multiband range of uh, uh, contacts everywhere from 10 meter down up to, or up to 80 meters. Now, our, I understand that a vertical antenna of this type is not perfect. There are compromises and this particular antenna has no radials. So it's going to be an experiment to see how this thing works for me and if it works at all. As I said, this uh, particular model of antenna has no verticals. It's a straight vertical beam, or I'm sorry, straight vertical antenna. And it rec they recommend that you uh, hoist it at least 10 feet above ground. The antenna itself is 23 and a half feet long. And I will be putting it on top of a 30, uh, about a 33 foot uh, antenna mass. So it's going to reach up to about 50 something feet. Now the fact that it's going to be above 50 feet, it will be visible from the street, but I'm going to combat this little issue by spray painting the antenna with an antenna safe uh, paint. In other words, a paint that contains no metal flakes or uh, any type of metal in it at all. And I'm also going to paint the mast, which will cause the uh, mast and the antenna to kind of blend in with my background in my yard and make it virtually uh, invisible from the front street. As with any multiband vertical antenna, there are compromises to be made. And obviously this is not going to be resident on the whole band of every single frequency from the 80 meter down to the 10 meter. But compromises, uh, there are. there's no antenna that's really perfect. And of course, taking this to a multiband vertical gives you another, uh, another hurdle to overcome. But I'm going to test this antenna and see what it's like and see if it meets my needs. So let's go ahead and take a look at the specifications of this antenna. The Comet CHA250B uh, consists of five elements in its uh, vertical construction. Uh, it's, these verticals are attached by nuts and wing nuts, bolts and wing nuts it is. And what is included here is the mount, mounting bracket itself uh, with the U-bolts. The mast, of course, is not included. Uh, this matching section, as they call it, or the RF transformer, uh, is factory sealed, so you can't open that up and inspect it. By doing so, you will bar, uh, void the warranty. Uh, but what's inside of that um, matching section are ferrite beads, and they look like this. The uh, load transformer, or load coil that is, uh, at the base of the antenna here, basically consists of ferrite beads and wiring that actually attenuates the um, signal itself and reduces the SWR, supposedly. Uh, one end, of course, going to the antenna and the other going to the SO239 connector. Okay, let's look over some of the specifications of this antenna. It is uh, classified as a ground plane antenna here. And the frequency range is approximate here. The transmit is approximately 3.5 to 57 megahertz. And on the receive end, approximately 2.0 to 90 megahertz. Its max power, however, is only 250 watts. So if you're running a lamp or an amplifier, uh, if your amplifier is greater than 200 uh, watts, you're probably going to burn this antenna up. I wouldn't even push a 250 watt. I don't know if they have an exact 250 watt uh, transformer out there, but... Uh, anything past 250 watts, you're going to uh, fry your antenna. So if you have a uh, 1200 or 1500 watt amplifier, 
I recommend either turning it off and not using it with this antenna because you will damage or destroy the antenna itself. Now the impedance on this antenna is set to 50 ohms with an SWR, of course, we'll find this out when I get this um, loaded and uh, mounted and everything and I'll test it. Uh, it's going to be less than, they say, 1.5 to 1, which is a typical across all the bands, all the 80 to uh, meter to 10 meter bands. But I will test this out myself. And of course, uh, I'm I'm using on partic this particular antenna, I'll be using the RG213 uh, coax cable, which is a higher end, better cable. So we'll, and lower loss as well. So we'll just see if I get anywhere around 1.5 to 1 across all the bands on this uh, vertical HF antenna. Uh, its connector is the standard SO239 female, and this antenna has a max length of 23.8 feet, so it's a tall guy. Uh, it's a tall antenna, and they recommend, Comet recommends a two-man installation. However, this antenna only weighs less than 8 pounds, so I believe I can go ahead and install this uh, basic, basically by myself. Um, it's just a matter of having the mast lowered far enough where I can install the antenna. I just won't do it in a high wind, obviously. And speaking of wind, this antenna has been rated to 67.5 miles per hour wind, or 108 kilo, uh, kilometers per hour. And it's 67.5 miles uh, per hour. That's uh, tropical storm hurricanes. Uh, probably a cat, cat one hurricane at least. If I'm going to have weather conditions like that, I'm going to lower the antenna anyway. I'm not going to try to uh, keep that antenna up and risk having a damage in, in a hurricane strength winds to begin with. And here living in Florida, hurricanes are just part of life. So we have to just uh, take uh, each storm as it is. Now, the mass size that it'll, this will fit to roughly is, again, approximately 1.8 all right, well, 1.18 to 2.8 inches in diameter. Of course, I'm sure if you have a larger diameter mast, you can get uh, some sort of adapter to from the local hardware store that will uh, fit that mast itself. Some uh, additional information on this antenna is the frequency characteristic figure. This will just give you an idea of frequency in megahertz, uh, your graph of where your SWR is going to hit. Now, they do have the typical warnings down here about uh, installing the antenna anywhere near uh, power lines, telephone lines, or anything else. That's just common sense. And note here, though, it says to get the maximum performance from your antenna, it must be installed at least 35 feet above ground. Well, as I said, my antenna mass is 33 foot long. I've got about 3 feet in the ground, so it's 30 feet above ground. Uh, that should be, that's pretty darn close, uh, probably immeasurable as far as uh, performance goes. So it's going to pretty much meet what their recommended height for uh, mounting the antenna is going to be. Now, uh, here's the warning I told you about. The antenna is long element and heavy to carry or install by a single person. Uh, I can actually, ha I actually have no problem lifting a 40 pound telescoping mask by myself so I think eight pounds max is going to be all right for me to handle but it's a warning yeah you take your own chance or your own risk now they also does give complete assembly and from what I've read this assembly of this antenna itself uh, not including mounting to the mask but the antenna assembly itself takes around 30 to 40 minutes uh, probably a little less a little longer depending on your skills uh, level for and uh, and your experience on uh, assembling antennas so i'm guessing around a 30 minute install time here after i get everything laid out and make sure all my parts are there uh that don't you hate getting something all together and finding out you're missing a part that is one of the most annoying things in life it also does give you some remarks and handling and about not touching it uh if you transmitting not touching the antenna just this common antenna uh, remarks and safety precautions you have to have give you some idea about operations here and finally it, it gives you maintenance on how to uh, maintain your antenna uh, you know basically just make sure you all the, the your uh, connections are tightened and from time to time go back and double check everything 
Let's take a look at some of the reviews of this antenna. And right now I'm on the eham.net site here. and uh, I'm going to take a look uh, at some, what some of the other people are saying about this antenna. Um, as I said before, I realize that a vertical uh, HF multiband antenna is compromised. It's not like having dipoles, but when you can't put dipoles up because of space limitations, sometimes this is your only and best option. So, and this basically just gives you the description I just gave. It's a um, broadband vertical antenna covering 75 down to 6 with no gap meters, that is. Uh, I just basically said everything I just told you about in the specifications, and as you can see, it's got mixed reviews. One of them that's they've got four to four stars to one star, and uh, basically a good antenna. This one does not have he's got problems with it. Uh, I'm not going to go through and read every one of these. You can go to uh, just do a search for uh, Comet uh, CHA two fifty B reviews, and you'll you'll find the site. This one, like I said, is on eham.net. Basically, in the mixed re uh, reaction, we've got four stars here, one here, three here, four here. I've uh, got five here, and five here, and five here. So, and three, five again, four. Uh, going right along here, it seems like, so far, the majority of the reviews uh, seem to be positive. They seem to be pretty good, and... Yeah, I guess it's based on your way you mount it and your location, uh, other factors. However, you know, you got two stars, four stars, five again, three, five again, um, five, 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 all the way down the line. So the antenna itself seems to have basically a majority of people are recommending it for what it is. Uh, obviously, everybody agrees that you're not going to get the optimal results as you would out of a dipole, but uh, it's basically got a, a majority of great reviews, so I'm going to leave it up to my testing and see how I feel about it. Well, there you have it. You have mixed reviews. Most of them good, though, however, for this particular antenna. I guess everybody's got their opinion of what these types of antennas are supposed to do and how they should perform. I'm going to leave it up to myself to make my own judgment on that. But, like I said, most of the reviews seem to be positive. Well, let's go ahead and put this antenna together and see what this looks like. Okay, my Comet CHA 250B just arrived a few minutes ago. You can see it comes in a nice long box. I've got this, obviously, if you can see from some of the packing tape. It came from Gigaparts, and this uh, happens to be Gigaparts in Huntsville, Alabama. So, I'm not going to do an unboxing video, but what I am going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and unbox it and lay out the uh, contents of this box and I'll uh, just show you what is actually in the box itself uh, instead of doing a whole unboxing. Then I'll get to um, assembling this uh, antenna and then I'll take it through the painting and then the mounting of the antenna and from there we'll probably be testing the SWR and all, and all the bands available. Okay this is the contents of the box here. I've got the main part of the antenna mast right here, complete with the mounting bracket for the antenna mast itself, uh, pole itself that is. Uh, this is the second section that goes into this first section. Third section here fits and secures into the second section. Fourth section here, the same, fits into the third section and is secured. Finally, I have got the very tip of the antenna right here, which secures into the uh, fourth section itself. I've also got uh, something, uh, a little black triangular shape. I have to look this up. I'm not sure what this is right here. I'll look it up. I hadn't gotten that far yet. It's got the mounting U-bolts right here. And, of course, comes with a set of instructions. So I'm going to go ahead and put this thing together. Uh, my next step after I get it together would be to paint it. Um, and, uh, and then I will go ahead and do some installation. So let's go ahead and move on with this project. Okay, I've got the antenna in the backyard where I have assembled it uh, by sitting in a couple of uh, sole horses. Um, forget the yard if you see any of the yard. I'm in the process of cleaning the whole yard up, so it's a wreck right now. So anyway, here is the antenna. 
the Comet CHA-250 what you see here is on the third section just um, just above the, the second on the third section itself that is paracord attached to a guy wire assembly I'm using paracord on the very top guy wire on the antenna itself uh, just for a little more flexibility and I just don't feel like hanging any more wire uh, that close to the antenna so that's why I chose with a guy wire all right now moving right along because said you can see it's a fairly long antenna as it states it's 23 and a half feet long and right here I'm in the process of using my MFJ 269D I am doing some VSWR testing on this antenna before I actually uh, mount it onto the pole itself I want to get a reading of what they say to expect and what I'm expecting here now for the jumper cable I'm testing it with two types of jumper cable I'm using the uh, LMR 400 and taking readings and then using the same readings I'm looking for I'm swap the uh, jumper cable out for the uh, RG213 now the uh, 213 is what I've got is coax going to my shack uh, be attached to the antenna so I want to get I just want to get a comparison of what the two different jumpers would be like they're both made by the same manufacturer so the quality should be the same again here's the antenna mast assembled it was fairly easy to assemble as well um, one word of warning though unless you've really got wide rooms and doorways and everything I wouldn't have tried to assemble this inside because 10 to 1, if you assemble it inside, you're going to have to take it apart to get it outside. So let me go show you what the uh, SWR readings compared as. And excuse the damn dogs next door in the ass. Okay, I'm going to go over some more stats on this uh, Comet CHA250V. Plus, I'm going to give you some uh, SWR readings that I received from this antenna prior to having it mounted onto the mast. It was still sitting across the uh, saw horses here. So let me go ahead and go into some of the specs again, and then I'll give you those readings. And once I get the antenna mounted, I'm going to do another set of readings, and I'll report those findings as well. The Comet CHA250B obviously has got uh, a wide range of uh, transmit and receive frequencies, as you can see here. Now, they are advertising a 1.6 to 1 or less uh, the SWR across all the HF bands uh, provided, all five bands that they have here. Uh, whether that's true or not, I don't know how Comet tests their antennas, what conditions they test them in, but uh, I didn't quite get the same readings that they got. Uh, but like I said, some, most of them are pretty close, so. And as I said, the max power here is 250 watts, so if you're using it, uh, uh, an amplifier over 200 watts uh, probably going to damage the antenna. The impedance itself again is at 50 and the length of the antenna uh, stands in at 23 and a half feet uh, in length weighing just over 7 pounds. Now the connector is a standard SO239 female and it requires a mask with a diameter, upper diameter of at least 1 inch to 2 inch so if you can find something that's a little bit larger I'm sure you can find a way to attach that going to the hardware store and getting some sort of adapter. Uh, it's not required, to, it's actually not recommended, that is, to install this antenna on any type of mast under one inch in diameter. Now, the max wind speeds that this uh, antenna is rated for is 67 miles per hour, which is around a Category 1 hurricane. Anything in the hurricane region, though, uh, it'd be advisable to go ahead and lower the mast so you don't have to try to weather the storm there. Now, this antenna does cover five bands, the 40, 20, 15, 10, and 6 meters. And I've run uh, some SWR tests across all those meters at various spots, and uh, these are the results that I got. At the 40 meters, uh, with the frequency starting at 7.075, then I did 100.200.300, uh, the LMR 400 cable showed 1.9, whereas the R R RG213 showed 1.5. Uh, SWRs, and as you can see, 
going down this chart here that they pretty much equal each other, each other. Uh, this is going with the claims of the 1.6 to 1 or lower across all bands with the exception of the LMR at 7.075 frequency every uh, everything else is pretty well uh, pretty close to their uh, standards again uh, with the LMR 400 at 7.2 that's slightly higher with 20 meters it's just not anywhere near the 1.6 to 1 as they advertise as you can see on the frequencies 14.150, 250, and 350 respectively. Uh, the LMR held at 2.2 straight down the line, whereas the RG213 held a 2.1 down the line. Now, well, when I get this antenna mask, uh, I mean the antenna mounted onto the mask and uh, raised, we're going to do another test, so we'll see what, this, uh, what these uh, figures look like then. Moving to the 15 meter band across frequencies 21.2, 21.3, 21.4, 21.450, 21 uh, LMR 400, as you can see, is above the 1.6 uh, rated uh, SWR, and so is the RG213. RG213 is not uh, really that much one point higher than the 1.6 advertised. Uh, LMR is one point, uh, just one point uh, above or two points above. Pretty close, pretty close, but not right on specs. The 10 meter, I measured from 28.3, 24, 5, 6, and 7. And the LMR 400 gave me a, across all those bands, a straight 2.6 SWR reading. And RG213 gave me a 2.5 down the range up till the 28.700, where it gave me a 2.4. Again, this is above what Comet claims to be the 1.6 across all bands. Now, the 6 meter, the final band that I tested, starting at ranges uh, 50.100, uh, 51, 52, 53, and 54, uh, the LMR 400 and RG213 again, both over 2 point, uh, a point that is a 2.0 uh, SWR outside the range of what Comet claims to be the 1.6. As you can see here, this is all between 2.3, 2.4, 2.5 uh, within the mix of the ranges here. So again, once we get the antenna raised, we'll go ahead and re-measure these SWRs and see what the uh, ratings are at that point. Oh, okay, here's a shot of both my VHF, UHF, and my HF antenna. The HF is uh, one on the left, one I just hoisted. It stands 50, about 55 feet from the base to the tip. I know previously I said I was going to paint the antenna mast. Uh, I decided against that. I figured why I spend the money. It's, uh, you know, I just, just decided against it. And as you can see, it's guyed down and also supported the house. Okay, here's just another view. Uh, this is the guy wire that's on the antenna itself. I am going to have to adjust it a little bit. It is uh, pulling a little to one side, but I'll just adjust the guy wire tension to straighten that antenna completely up. It's just basically another view of both antennas together. Both antenna masts have been properly grounded. As you can see, this is a uh, an eight foot grounding rod pounded into the ground and brass fittings, electrical fittings attached to both and a six gauge copper wire connected to the two. Okay, as promised here are some SWR readings from across uh, several bands on this new antenna after I've hoisted it. And of course uh, Comet still claims a 1.6 to 1 or lower across all the bands and for these tests I'm only using the uh, RG213 uh, since that's the antenna freed line and I'm going to be showing you the before and after mounting compa SWR comparisons here. And starting with 40 meters, starting at uh, frequency 7.0 and going down at 7.3, uh, as you can see before mounting was all steady 1.5. Now after mounting, interestingly, uh, they seem to have gone up. Now. Granted, this antenna is about 50-something feet in the air. 
And at the time of the testing, I was picking up about a five or six mile an hour wind. So I don't know if the winds had anything to do with this. But interesting enough, uh, after the antenna was mounted, the SWR did increase slightly. Uh, all within usable ranges, however, but it did increase nonetheless. Moving over to 20 meters, starting at 14.150 to 14.350, before mounting, you can see the SWR is a steady 1.5 across all that. Uh, again here, the SWR seemed to have gone up some. Uh, 1.6, 1.7, 1.9, again, all are within usable ranges, but strangely enough, higher than uh, what they were reading before the antenna was actually hoisted. Again, this may have something to do with the wind blowing at the time. On 15 meters, starting at 21.200 to 21.400, before mounting a steady 1.7 across there. Now, uh, at 21.2, it did drop to 1.6, but maintained as 1.7 throughout the other two frequency tests. On 10 meters, starting at 28.300 to 28.700, before mounting, pretty much a steady 2.5 across the uh, test range, except for the 28.7, which was 2.4. Now, here is where I saw a slight decrease, but still over 2. You know, SWR is still over 2, and uh, as you can see, it was pretty much 2.2 across the band, uh, except for 28.700 frequency, it was dropped to 2.1. Still within usable range, but uh, not anywhere to what Comet claims to be the 1.6. On 6 meters, uh, starting at 50, going down to 54. As you can see before mounting, we had a various range of 2.423 and so forth. But after mounting, uh, it did decrease a little bit. Uh, 2.1, 20, 1.9, 21, and 21. Uh, again, not what Comet seems to claim, but uh, go figure. They, like I said, I don't know what their testing conditions are to come up with those results. Now... Considering this antenna is not rated for 80 meters, I did do a testing beforehand. I just didn't uh, publish it uh, in the, earlier in the video. So on this one, I did decide to go ahead and uh, publish what I read on this uh, 80 meter band, starting at 3.6 down to 4.0. Before mounting, I was seeing 37, 36, 34, 33, 32, respectively. But after mounting, I did drop some to 3, 4, 3, 2, 3, 1, 2, 9, and 2, 7. And the 3.9 and 4.0 oh, could possibly, they're, they're in, within usable. And all of these, all of these uh, tests, they show that I could use a tuner on this uh, antenna as well. But uh, again, this, this particular 80 meters is not rated on this antenna, or at least according to Comet. But... Uh, I decided to go ahead and do a test anyway, just for S and Gs, and sure enough, uh, some of that stuff is in uh, acceptable range uh, as far as being able to use it with a uh, with an antenna tuner. Well, to summarize, though this antenna is not perfect, and no vertical HF antenna is going to be perfect, I don't believe Comet's uh, claim of 1.6 to 1 across all the bands is going to hold here. Uh, even though the antenna is mounted well above 30 feet or at least 32, 33 feet uh, from the ground. Plus, I'm also using uh, RG213 coax, which is a higher rated cable. Um, I don't think I'm going to ever find that 1.6 across all the bands as Comet boasts, but then again, companies are known to push their own products and toot their own horns, so yeah, it is what it is. Uh, I did some contacts last night. I made some contacts last night, and they gave me 5.9 readings, so all in all, it's not a bad antenna at all. Again, no vertical HF antenna is going to be perfect. This is far from perfect, but it, for what it does, it doesn't seem to be doing a bad job at all. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope it's helped out some in you know, making a decision whether you should buy this uh, particular antenna or not. And before I forget, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and click that bell to be notified of future videos. Until next time, 73. And don't leave yet, I've got one last thing to show you before the credits roll. 
73 again. This is Steve, K4SRF. Hey, if you're wondering if you can see these antennas from the street, uh, yes you can. This is KI4ARC Red Cross, over. KI4ARC, K4 Energy, go ahead. Uh, Roger, I just wanted to give you a heads up. Um, we talked to the 